why is it security one if you can't tell us uh, how many of the terrorists were swapped because you're not giving us their names or something it's just the figure do you have the figure no we're asking you to tell us how many were swapped you're not telling us their names it's just the number of the terrorists who were swapped for this uh, recently released girls well I don't particularly see how it's going to be helpful except maybe the curiosity of the media naturally but I, I don't see how it's going to be helpful to know how many what matters more what is more important is that the girls are back 82 of them and that is quite significant yeah, but Mr. Additional, just leave us to decide how that will be helpful to us. You just give us that information, and we decide how helpful it, it will be. <laughs> uh, well, if, you, if you're fortunate to get a top security person on the program, I'm sure. If they are inclined to give the figure, they will give it. Okay, I know you spoke a little bit about this, but still don't understand the rationale behind not allowing journalists who were present there, for instance, us, to interview those, late, those uh, girls who were released, even much after. Well, one thing you need to understand is that um, the girls are just coming out of captivity, and they need to settle in settle into a new environment, savor their freedom, and uh, not all of them can handle the media for now. So it's better you let them settle in, and uh, uh, when, when the need to speak is going to be uh, easier for them to do so. Don't forget that at the third anniversary of their kidnap, April 14, there was even uh, a documentary in which some of the girls spoke, some of the 21, is better that way rather than when they are just arriving yesterday. Even though we think we've seen them being spoken to while they were uh, released, the first batch, for instance. Where, where are those 21 now that were released? Yes, I said earlier that they are still in Abuja in the facility where their rehabilitation uh, is being done. Do we, is, are you, is the government still negotiating with uh, Boko Haram group for the release of all the other ones? Yes, not until every girl that is alive is, is released. The, 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 the job will not be done. You know, the president said it earlier that he won't even consider the Boko Haram insurgent over until the girls are back. So we have about uh, one, 103 plus 3, 106 of them back and about 113 still outstanding. So until the government secures the release of the rest, the <coughs> Boko Haram insurgency will not be deemed to have been completely uh, uh, controlled and curtailed. So did, did the government work with intelligence from the Western countries for this one, or it was just basic intelligence? No, uh, if you listen to the president in his uh, address yesterday, he thanked local and international community, all those who helped. So there was uh, international help and uh, uh, a number of them facilitated what has happened. Okay, let me ask this about the president's health. I know you've released a press statement that, uh, yes, uh, the president has gone for, yes. um, for medicals and uh, the letters have been transmitted, but we didn't get to get across to you before that uh, happened. But, you know, before that, there were all sorts of calls including those who were saying, look, even today, we're seeing some daily saying, look, uh, the call for the president to resign. What do you make of that? It can only be an opinion. This is a democracy. There's freedom of speech in our constitution. So anybody saying that has a right to it. It doesn't mean it's gospel. 
Like I've said, I say it again, over 15 million Nigerians voted in the president. So when 10, 15, 20 people say resign, it can't override the will of 15 million Nigerians. You know, we, we, we wish the president well. Everybody, I mean, he's a, he has a family. We all hope that things go on well. But you Thank say you. the doctors will determine the length of stay. Uh, well, in this case, who knows? Not even the Constitution may have a role to play here. But what if it gets that the doctors say, Mr. President, you have to stay longer here than even your laws require? What happens? I, I don't recall that our laws uh, 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 have stated any time frame in which a president who is recovering can be away from duty post. What our law requires in section 145 of the constitution is that power be transmitted and that has been done. What I meant to say was if they say, Mr. President, from the look of things you have to just, well, in a manner of speaking, just lay low and it will not be good for you to go to the rigors of the office. What happens in that case? Well, that's a hypothetical situation, and because it's hypothetical, we will never be able to answer it because it has not come up. But when it does come up, I'm sure that question can be answered. If we don't cross our bridges, we will get to them. So now that, you know, um, these girls have been released and it's been confirmed that there was a swap, there definitely will be those who will be nervous about... Uh, you know, whether or not there'll be any security issues that they should be worried about, about especially in the Northeast. Um, what would you say to those people who are anxious? Well, when there is ability and capacity to, to ensure security, there's no need to worry. The Northeast is under effective control of the security agencies. I know that there are pockets of attacks here and there, but in terms of is the area secure? Yes, we know it is secure. Because you must recall that the last time, even though the government vehemently denied that there was any um, monetary payment or any inducement given or any swap Get, you know, done as a result of that. The people noticed an increased uh, spate of bombings shortly after the uh, 21 girls were released the first time, and and a lot of them put it to the government, having given Boko Haram firepower. It was a conjecture. It was a conjecture, and uh, there was no truth in it. Uh, I, 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 they talk about the the dying key, the last kicks of a dying horse. That was what you saw, because there were factions. I'm sure when those 21 were released, a faction must have been, must have been peeved and it decided to strike with some ferocity after that. But uh, it was curtailed. Why hasn't the Bring Back Our Girls group been involved in the rehabilitation of these girls? The rehabilitation is, uh, is, is, is government responsibility. It's government responsibility, but that's not ruling out the fact that non-governmental organizations can be involved. I don't think uh, BBOG is poised for that. That's not why they were set up, I believe. But they haven't even gotten to meet the girls. They have been prevented from meeting the girls who's, whose freedom they have agitated for. for I, the past I, I'll years. say BBOG from inception has been doing a very good job. Until now, they are still doing a good job. Let's give them kudos for what they have done, but let them also stay within the ambit of what they were set up to do. You don't think that it will only be fair that they meet the girls, at least? Uh, there's, there will be nothing wrong in that, but the, the interface with the parents of the girls, with the Chibo community, and I think that's what is more, more, more important. But there's no problem with it if they meet the girls. Well, we do know that the Vice President's uh, Committee, heading that panel, investigating the money is found in uh, Osborne, is going to be submitting its report today. Yes. Since the President is out of town, who is the Vice President going to be submitting it to? Yes, uh, you will recall that before the President left last night, the Vice President met with him. So it's not unlikely that that will have come up between them. And until the vice president, acting president now, comes up to say this is the position, we do not know. How do you think you're going to proceed from there? It's not for me to think. 
It's for me to communicate mm -hmm. what has been passed on to me to communicate. I, I may have personal opinion, but it, it does not affect what has been done, and it should not affect it, and I should not even say it publicly. Rather, it is when I am told this is the decision, then I communicate it. So, so far, I mean, what are we to expect? I'm sure that Nigerians will also be wondering, you know, what we are to expect. We should expect what is fair and what is just from the reputation of those who constituted the panel, the vice president, the NSA, the attorney general of the federation. They are people of honor and integrity, so we can look forward to fairness and justice. Agreed. But I'm just saying that, you know, what are the next steps? I mean, now that the committee has con concluded its report, you're saying that the vice president did meet with the president before he left yesterday. Yes. What steps do you think we would see, you know, stemming from that? Yeah, don't, don't forget that the president is merely going for a review. He's only a phone call away. So I, I, I believe that the, the vice president is going to be in constant touch with him. And they, they can still move on on things like that. Well, Mr. Femi Adishino, we have to thank you very much for coming on Sunrise Daily. He's the special advisor to the president on media and publicity.